It didn't take much effort for me to decide what field of work I wanted to pursue a career in. The real question was centered around just exactly what I wanted to do in that field. And during my freshman year of high school, I thought I shared that same dream with a bunch of other young creative types. I wanted to be a music producer. And by producer, I really mean beat maker, which are actually two very different things. Producers oversee the entire project from scheduling and budgeting to supervising the creative process. Beat makers only collaborate with the artist to make the instrumental or beat the artist records over. I wanted to be like Timbaland in those videos. You know, the ones where he's working with Jay-Z and Busta Rhymes? They were having fun working together and I thought, damn, I wanna be a part of that. In my experiences, the two terms producer and beat maker are used interchangeably. The difference between these two terms isn't distinguished most of the time. So just to bring everyone in together on one accord just for this video, I'll use the term producer since that's the one more widely used. Word got around my hometown that I started making beats, and eventually I found myself within this small community of rappers that taught me how the game worked. Being a music producer that wanted to make money meant that I would be selling beats in a certain way through a brokering service on the internet. This process is called beat leasing. The way beat leasing works is that a producer allows an artist to make a song out of one of their beats for a price. That price comes with terms and conditions set by the producer and the artist must adhere to them. Most often, these terms and conditions are based on metrics caps or time restraints. For example, a song you made with a beat you lease can only be streamed on Spotify 10,000 times or that the song can only be on Spotify for a year. Once those caps are met, the artist must buy another lease to keep their song up wherever they have it. Each lease generally costs anywhere from $25 to as much as $250, and they often get more expensive depending on agreement terms or what you need from the producer. The higher the sales cap, the higher the cost of the lease. And having stem files for each instrument so you can get your song properly mixed will cost more than just an MP3 file for you to record over. The trade-off for the comparatively cheap price of a beat lease is that the producer reserves the right to sell that exact same deal to other artists who are also interested in leasing that beat. And if anyone wants to be the only one who can use that beat legally, then they'd have to pay for whatever the producer charges for a thing called exclusive rights. That cost is usually exponentially more, like in the thousands or the tens of thousands. The sale of exclusive rights not only prohibits the sale of non-exclusive leases for the beat in question in the future, it also prohibits other artists that leased the beat prior to the big sale from buying more leases. Those artists must take their song down once the terms of their current lease have been fulfilled. This business model has been a huge part of how the indie hip hop scene made its music, and it still is. Multiple producers and artists found success with help from websites like YouTube, SoundCloud, SoundClick, Airbit, and BeatStars. Uh. <clears throat> I said BeatStars, jeez. And amidst all that success, including my stint on an indie record label and beat broker, viewing the beat leasing system as a despicable but necessary evil is a hill that I'm absolutely willing to die on. Now, when I explain the beat leasing system like I did, you might think that process sounds fair enough. An indie artist with a small budget is granted an accessible yet temporary solution towards tackling the big obstacle of owning the stuff that they make. They can release the music, make it available for sale, and allocate some of that profit towards the eventual purchase of the exclusive rights to the instrumentals they use. It's almost like making payments to own a car or a house. Not only that, the producer gains a low commitment, continuous stream of income through these artists paying for leases or purchasing exclusive rights. But that's theory. Let's talk practice. Here's the way I see it. Consumers got used to accessing content on platforms like Spotify or Apple Music and now want to get music from indie artists for cheap or even free 99. This makes making money difficult for artists, so they have to adjust their business models until they get a return. 
One place they could cut costs was getting beasts for free. Or maybe they found loopholes in the terms they agreed to to increase the shelf life of their songs. Or maybe they just forgot to keep track of their metrics and now everyone's lost because the producer can't track anyone's metrics but their own. Or maybe they're just assholes who think too highly of themselves. Whatever the case may be, the producer has to adjust their business model now. They're forced to make more beats and sell leases at higher prices because these artists aren't coming back to renew their leases. This creates a high cost market, which incentivizes the artists who are already trying to cut costs to make a profit from their music to push for getting beats for cheap or worse, free 99. There are a lot more indie artists like rappers and singers that subscribe to that belief than you would think. And like beliefs of any kind, other subscribers get a little abrasive when others' beliefs don't align with theirs. I've received death threats and DMs from other artists telling me to kill myself because I wouldn't lease a beat at their price. Sometimes in the music industry, no one's willing to give, and that sucks. And sure, the process of leasing a beat can go on without a hitch, but that doesn't mean there won't be any other obstacles you'll have to leap over down the road. First off, digital distribution outlets never really updated their systems and models for something like the beat leasing system. I found out about this by being blocked from uploading one of my old albums to streaming platforms because I made one song out of a beat that other people leased. Turns out, a big artist also leased that same beat to make a song for one of their old mixtapes. Once I got the email notification that my submission for an entire album got rejected because of one song, I doubled back on my decision to upload all of my old stuff on the streaming platforms, except for a few fringe exceptions. That email made me wonder about a lot of things. The one song that blocked an entire album from getting uploaded came from a mixtape that was uploaded onto a website called Dat Piff for free. Dat Piff only hosts hip hop mixtapes. They don't upload your music to streaming services and they don't register them in any content ID system of any kind. So how does that play out for other artists that lease beats? Does the first person to upload a song with a lease beat just colonize whatever platform they have it on? Or is that territory given to the artist who bought leasing rights but got a record deal quicker? I've tried researching to get the answer, but I've come up with nothing. So to my knowledge, there's just this big, huge, undiscovered area regarding all of this that needs to be fleshed out. But will it? Honestly, I don't think so. Because you see, streaming services like Spotify and distribution services like DistroKid only care about logistics and getting the music to the viewers. And if that is the case, then it makes sense not to be involved in a legal minefield they don't have space in. Another related question. What happens if someone else blows up with a song that uses the same beat? Lil Nas X leased the beat for Old Town Road from Young Keo on BeatStars. Mm. Like, if you made a song with that beat before Lil Nas X did, imagine the embarrassment. Your friends would go, hey, that Old Town joint used your beat, right? And what would you say? Um, actually? But let's say that doesn't happen. Instead, someone else bought the exclusive rights to a beat you're leasing and you now have to take your song down. Seeing something you worked so hard on getting removed from the internet is saddening, but remember, every producer has different terms and conditions with the leases that they make. They're not all the same. Some producers don't honor ongoing leases and expect you to take your song down the moment that exclusive rights get sold. I hope you read what you willfully agreed to by buying the lease in the first place. Some of those terms and conditions can really be that one-sided. Thankfully, some producers preview a few of the terms and conditions you're automatically agreeing to. But what you see on someone's beat marketplace isn't representative of the agreement in its entirety. True to the hustling nature of the artist, a lot of them only want to do the fun stuff and just forego the business. So a lot of the legal necessities are treated like obstacles and get streamlined. And while that's great in one light, it can seriously fuck over the artist and the other producers they might try to pull in the mix for the sake of keeping their song up. Imagine this, an artist leases a beat. 
Time passes, exclusive rights get sold to someone else, and now they're unable to buy another lease. Let's also say that the artist really wants to keep their song up, and they're bold enough to go to the producer they leased that beat from and say, hey, can you make a similar beat to this one so I can keep my song up? The producer is smart, so they refuse. So the artist goes to other producers and he asks them, Hey, can you remake this beat verbatim so I can keep my song up? Yeah, that happened to me once. I absolutely abhorred it. Remaking beats verbatim just sounds like the hardest game of legal minesweeper ever. Plus, there's just too much guesswork involved. What sense were used before? This sounds this similar, sounds right? Which side chain side chain is there were so many questions that it'd be easier to create something new. I already pride myself on my original work, so why not just throw the cash to commission a remix instead? I asked about that, by the way. They said no. But setting all that aside, there's another reason that ultimately sank the beat-selling ship. As a creative person living in a society where creative types aren't all too appreciated, I felt a lot of pressure to force myself to be creative and upload something new in the hopes that someone would buy it. And while I'm aware that forcing myself to be creative needs to happen sometimes, doing it wholly for the sake of other people really took a toll on my mental health. Now, I only work and collaborate with my friends and the people that I've networked with. And because of that, my headspace behind creating content has improved tenfold along with the quality of my work. Things are just a lot better whenever I work directly with other artists and producers instead of having a one-off deal that's often one-sided and automated. Now, I just sat here and played the mudslinger to this entire system, but I also said that it's a necessary evil. Yes, there are so many things that can go wrong in its practice, and there are a lot of things that do. But at the same time, I'd be a gatekeeping asshole if I just advocated to do away with the whole idea. Beat leasing allows the means of making music to be accessible to anyone that wants to give it a shot. It stands for a cause that I back 100%. I just think that it's an absolute shame that the result of such an innovative system is a big mishmash of shit that could go wrong. Everything gets skewered because artists and producers look at the beat leasing system as a means of doing what they want the way they envision it happening, not how it's supposed to work when in proper practice. So what's the solution to all of this? Well, I see multiple. Beat leasing favors the producer the most, so producers have to come up with ways to do right by the promise that the business model offers. This could mean revisiting the base or the template terms and conditions that the beat marketplace offers them. This could mean changing the way that artists view these terms and conditions rather than going, oh, by the way, after a lease gets bought. Maybe it's something as radical as leaving these big beat marketplaces entirely to just have total control over how you sell your beats. Artists need to learn and understand the implications behind the decision to buy a beat lease. Whenever you lease a beat, the process of creating and releasing music is no longer a concern that only belongs to you. You now share that concern with the producer. So just keep an eye on the analytics and metrics so that the both of y'all eat. Also, be smart enough with allocation and budgeting to make sure that you can purchase exclusive rights to that beat you're leasing in the future. I also think fans have a say in this as well. We all need to support our favorite indie musicians by buying their shit. Yes, Beyonce can still make her obligatory payments even if someone illegally downloads or streams Renaissance just once, but indie artists rely more heavily on their fan base to make their living. And while how accessible music can be for everyone is beneficial to the evolution of music as a whole, it comes at the cost of leaving artists out to dry provided they don't know how the game works. Which is a lot of us, including me. And with that, that's the video. If you like what you saw, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button below, and click the bell to the right of it to be notified of every upload. If you have any more questions about the beat leasing system, feel free to drop them in the comments section below, and I'll try to answer what I can. If you want to see more videos like this, you can help me make them by visiting my Patreon page. 
You can get all kinds of complimentary goodies like audio and study scores if you pledge. And if you want to keep up with me on social media, you can follow me on Instagram or join my Discord server. I also do a lot more than just these videos. There are Twitch streams, music releases, IRL concerts, and curated playlists. The links to everything is in the description box below. Thanks so much for sticking through all of this. And until next time, drink water and stay dope. Thank you.